Welcome to Trade the NBA.com. This is John. This report is for the fifth and well, the continuation. We now reached uh, the upside of our targets uh, here in the pre market. Uh, what we ended up seeing here on the DSC was the cyan moving below uh, red to place right about here, and it's continued. We also had the reset of the orange, which meant we weren't in a short cycle. And that was coupled with the steel reset, which is uh, very short term buyers, uh, you know spiking up now they're easing off a little bit but what you had is a new zone move of the long-term buyers in red here breaking above zero so still strength um overbought though last couple of days uh with the red uh extreme histograms which just means that that's your retrace target at this particular point is the 2708 level uh which is considerably higher now in a deep move lower uh, we're going to be seeing these positive extremes revisited, uh, which would be all the way down to 2600. That's a much more serious bear market move. Um, we're not looking at that at this particular point, especially given what we're seeing from uh, DOC readings here. So, um, full bore ahead. And that typically happens. Usually you get a three to five day run on a breakout of the highs, and then you end up retracing back to that breakout point. Um, and if it doesn't quite make it back to that breakout point, then we could be in store for a much bigger run, uh, which I'll be able to give you projections on um, probably the next day or so, or beginning of the week. Uh, but you can see here, full reset of the shakeout indicator as we turn around and uh, well above the mean here, which is the uh, yellow line. So being that far uh, ahead of it, uh, Suggests that uh, we're probably getting a little bit frothy, meaning that uh, I think they'll probably see some intermittent weakness in here. Super strong euro move there, even though we've moved up into the short range, you get a full reset of the steel. Could still be a little bit more weakness until that uh, pops back up, but been a huge move into euro in this belief that uh, eurozone inflation is outstripping. Uh, uh, U.S. economy uh, as far as inflation goes, that's going to change pretty darn quick and the Fed will be well behind it and they'll need to be behind it because in fact they should lag it significantly to let inflation sort of run away. It's the only way they're going to compound um, savings for the deficit and or debt because the only way to grow out of that $20 trillion is to really inflate your way out of it. Uh, you need a 1970s style and you have the potential. If you get significant enough growth and you get that inflation going and and you are lagging rates, um, that's the way you'll do it. And I know that there are a few sharp uh, individuals who've thought about that. There are collateral effects, obviously, to doing that. Um, but hey, at some point, you have to figure out what you're going to do with $20 trillion in debt when you're unable or unwilling to reduce your spending, uh, particularly now when you're throwing in you know, tax cuts to it. So, um, yeah. That's a complicated topic right there. Um, though it is interesting, I mean, like I was mentioning before, uh, the reality is that uh, if you didn't have the rate increases from the Fed during uh, the beginning of uh, Trump's administration, they would have had a balanced uh, budget. There would have been no deficit. So um, it's quite interesting. Uh, who knows how that's going to play out now with the current um, tax cuts and how that will impact revenue and also with the repatriation I mean you could see significant one-time increases um, you know 60 hundred billion dollars from companies paying taxes on large cash reserves that they bring back so we'll keep an eye on it but this one's going to be the key I think if uh, well in this ETF uh, for USO I think a move of uh, gasoline uh, oil and that that starts to get uh, a little bit higher than this probably is going to create enough ripple effect a month or two down. Like I said, I was still saying looking at second quarter uh, before you start to see inflationary numbers and I don't think that that's uh, changed. And when it does, I mean, that's going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on the euro because um, the real question is with the labor market growth, what we're seeing is all of this uh, untapped labor is getting used, but we're not seeing increases in wage. And until you get those uh, wage increases, uh, you won't know that you've really sucked up the labor supply, which just means that there's uh, plenty of availability of workers without uh, mass immigration. Go figure.
uh, gold continuing its spike. It's not going to stop. Uh, this is going to keep going. And uh, it's going to be an interesting play here with the cryptocurrency. Uh, you've got some of these other ones. Um, the one that you're probably going to hear the most about, I would guess, would be the uh, Ripple. Uh, I may put that one up because that one is supported by the banks because it's about um, uh, interbank transfers of monies in different currencies and that's something that uh, they support. doesn't mean that they support the coin. Uh, it's still, again, a fantasy thing. But you can see that we ended up down here with our buys that came through off of the move above the 23%. We broke the 50. That meant we were going to the highs. Once we started to see the low on our Fibonacci's increase, that's usually a call back to the low. But in this particular case, we had new highs coming. So we have new highs even with the rise there. Um, you don't get it, it was until it flattened out and then you got your return to the 50%. Uh, once we get to the 50%, that was right about here. Uh, you ended up with the uh, similar moves. Uh, also sign below red and then you ended up with a brief DOC spread that took place right there before we ended up with the exact same situation where all it did was retrace to the 50% and then you had the orange dip below along the same time with the cyan. And if you didn't take advantage of that opportunity at this point with positive uh, shakeout taking place, uh, you get left behind pretty fast because that took place down at 15,000. So that was over a thousand um, back there when this would popped to 16, got uh, way over bottom of the move. So you know that's where our return is. Even if it's not to the first one, uh, the second one didn't happen. So even likelihood would be to uh, this 15 to 60 uh, on any significant retrace. But this particular point, you still have cyan well under red. Yes, red is uh, extreme levels, not surprising with this. The short setup that developed uh, right here at the first peak, not going to be uh, too significant because of the uh, reset of the steel, which is exactly what you saw because you're only getting a retrace to the 76%. So that's quite normal, but just an indication that uh, the problem with this one is this. Well, I'm showing you a 15 minute chart. I can't show you a tick chart because if I go to a tick chart, there isn't even enough tick information to put up enough data to see anything which just shows you how illiquid the setup is and how manipulated it can be. So um, it's something worth bearing. And I don't think a lot of people recognize that. A lot of the volumes on this are synthetic and um, it's not real trades taking place. So something to bear in mind. Uh, we saw this, I remember back in the ooh, late 80s, early 90s with the um, penny stocks. It was like all the rage. This is no different. So. Just change the name, call it a cryptocurrency um, that has the exact same properties and behavior uh, as um, those thinly traded items that used to come through as speculative stuff. So, yeah, it's okay. Does it mean that there still isn't money to be made doing it? It just, you have to know what it is. Um, it's one of those things where I tell people that, you, you know, I've talked to some that even do it on margins, like, no. If you can't pay for that outright, don't even mess with it. It's just, that would be insane. So our 5K from, well, I have to shrink back from where the original buys came back in all the way back over here after our fake dip at the end of the holiday, which we knew was just a rotation setup. Um, started getting our new buys, well, pretty much immediately upon there, right about the... Uh, 79, 2679, and then it's pretty much just been a non stop. We haven't even seen a single retrace to the 50% until we plateaued right here with the narrowing of the um, uh, Fibonacci range and finally contracted to the point where, I mean, even this tiny little decrease that really pretty much you ended up with flat ABM, uh, it's pretty much just a rise to. A reset. Uh, it's not like uh, we've had any significant dip whatsoever. And then it just produced a new buy setup with the six sevens. Um, orange dipping below red, and then obviously the cyan below. Uh, that was a clear indication. So it's been explosive, but that's the nature of the moves. And you know, this is where, like, even on the Skype chat before I was talking about, you know, when there's no reason to get out of a position, don't get out of a position. It's only when you actually have a signal to uh, do you need to. Uh, 
is what stops are for and just raising them along the lines that uh, match uh, where the market's behavior is. So, as always, trade well and I will put up any charts relevant uh, in Skype chat.